so it's been a really fun weekend hunting here at Turkey Crossing Ranch. It That's sure has, huh? It has been a lot of fun. Thanks for having us. A lot of game? A lot of game. A ton of game. game. And you've been in a good mood because of the election? Oh my God, yes. Trump is the real deal, no doubt about it. He's going to turn this country around. So how many acres is this ranch at? Yeah, Turkey Crossing Ranch is right at 2,700 acres. Yeah, 2,700 I think and change. And you have whitetail, axis, black Turkey, buck. black buck, yeah. Okay. And then we uh, just got through high fencing 400 acres that we're going to be raising some of the uh, 200 plus inch deer in. That will probably be ready in about two or three years. It'd be nice having a pasture, those big guys running around out there. And just be really cool. So any openings for hunts this coming spring, turkey? Oh yeah, yeah. We've got a few books already, but uh, I think the season lasts, I think six weekends, maybe seven. But I mean, you know, these, these hunts don't have to be conducted on weekends. They can be any time. So, you know, I think the season lasts 45, 50 days for turkeys. And, you had, uh, and right now, deer season for us runs through, I think, the uh, last day of February. Okay. So we're on the MOD permit. So uh, we can do what we want out here for a good while. Perfect. And you had um, some father daughter hunts out here yeah. recently, right? Yeah, we did. And you brought in um, somebody to do manicures for I girls. brought in T for out of San Antonio. She's the best in San Antonio at doing uh, manicures, pedicures, and, and lashes for women. So she's pretty cool, and she's a cute little thing, and does a great job. And the dads loved it, the daughters were thrilled, so it was an exciting weekend. So, And all the girls got a got an axis, uh, got an axis buck, so it was pretty cool. Nice. Pretty neat. I've already spent a lot of this trip, my son, and you helped him get an axis buck this morning. We did. Yeah. Yeah, and a nice buck at that, huh? And for Jamie and I, one of our favorite parts is the food, some of the best food we've had in a long time. Biscuits are great. Yeah. They're, 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 they're really good. And, uh, I'm going to take some of them. Yeah, some of I, I think I would. So tell us a little bit about, even though you don't have your longhorns here yet, they're still down by San Antonio? Yeah, they're southeast of San Antonio about, I don't know what it is, 10, 15 miles southeast of SA. Yeah. So yeah. tell us a little bit about just your favorite type of longhorn, what you look for in your program, that sort of stuff. I think it's really pretty simple. Uh, the ones that make you the most money. Or, the, or my favorite one. So, uh, but I prefer heavier base animals. I don't care for straight out that much, unless she's got the base to carry those horns. And uh, a lot of color, a lot of speckled up brindle. Uh, you know, just lots of color, big body, uh, straight backed animals. I, I like a good confirmation on my cow. So. Why do you like big bases so much? Well, I guess because I'm a hunter. Yeah. And uh, so if you're a hunter, I, you know, you like big bases, you like horns. And that's how I got in the longhorn business, because I do like horns. So uh, that kind of turned me on, tripped my trigger. So I guess it's been close to 20 years or over 20 years I've been doing this. And I think I look the same as I did back then, don't you guys? <laughs> I'm still kind of pretty, of you know? So. Who were, uh, who were some of the first breeders you met when you got into the business? Well, my first sale was the Wyo Ranch sale. And I guess that was roughly 20 years ago. And me and my buddy, old Dick Armstrong, we went over there together. And I think we had a few beers before we got there. And while we were there, we probably had about another 10 beers apiece. And I think I left there that day with 11 animals. I'm sure I was the, uh, probably not the top dollar buyer of the most animals anyway. And, uh, I didn't know anything about them, and I think I kept one out of the 11. Do you have a favorite sale that you like to go to every year? Oh yeah, my favorite sale is Mr. Red McCombs Fiesta sale, for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's close to the house, you know, which I prefer, but I think it's, it's the way a sale should be, you know, a dance, and good food, and under a tent, or out in the open like that. Uh, just. I think I've been to every one of them just about since I started, started buying long ones. So, so and Red's a good man. I like I like what Red does. So I like to try to do my part in keeping his, his uh, cell going. So most people might not know about your background outside of Longhorns. 
was your... I thought we were going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> were, were your bull riding days, did that kind of make you like the like getting into Longhorns, still a little bit of that cowboy? No, I, I, no. I, I'll be quite honest. I could ride any damn bull. I mean, there wasn't a bull, you, you know, you couldn't put it in the only going to ride, you know, for two or three seconds. <laughs> but uh, most of the time, most of the time those bulls were on top of me, I wasn't on top of them. But it was a lot of fun, and I think I'm real lucky. You know, I've been on probably around two, probably 250 bulls, which today's standards is not a lot, but back in those days there was a lot of bulls. And I've only had a few, nothing major, you know, as far as going bad, so I my back's a little jacked up. Other than that, I'm okay. It was a lot of fun. So what do you do outside of outside of Longhorns? What's your, your full-time game? We're doing it. We're on the ranch. Um, I'm down here as much as I possibly can. Um, uh, hunting, a little fishing, my kids, and uh, of course now i got Karina in my life, so that's kind of cool. No, I kind of, very cool, very cool. I'm afraid that. <laughs> so, no, it's all good. It's all good. And I, I, my business, I, I dabble in it a little bit. You know, my son kind of taking over, and another guy, the partner. And your business is and, uh, Central. Central Texas, Lad the Platinum, the best damn company in the country. Right now, we're employing close to 500 people. Um, and what would your best advice for future longhorn breeders, new longhorn breeders? What advice can you give them? You know what? Don't go out there and buy junk. I think I said this one time at Red, so he wanted me to give a little, a little talk to everybody. Um, you know, don't go out there and buy junk that you're not going to build or make any money on. So instead of buying ten at fifteen hundred bucks a piece, buy one at twelve to fifteen thousand dollars and uh, match her up with a good bull, either your own bull or barring a bull or you know AI and a, bull, a cow or something like that. You'll get your money back in that good cow if it's a good one. So do your homework. Uh, call me for advice. I charge $100 a session. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, you won't regret it. And if all, if all goes to hell, you can eat the damn thing. So, you know, you're good to go. Well, thanks for having us out. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been fun. You guys come back and see us. And, uh, we'll do it again next year, hopefully. So, yeah. but buy your longhorns, people. You're enjoying them. Bye. <laughs>